हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स स्टार्ट टू डिस्कस वन अनदर टॉपिक फ्रॉम आवर यूनिट ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी नेम्ड एज ब्रीथिंग एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेस कॉमनली वी यूज द टर्म रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम फॉर दिस चैप्टर कॉमनली वी यूज द टर्म रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम ऑफ ह्यूमन बॉडी सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल स्टडी इन डिटेल्स अबाउट द नीड ऑफ द रेस्पिरेशन एंड द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द ह्यूमन रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम नाउ वेन वी स्टार्ट टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टर्म रेस्पिरेशन वी यूज टू से इट इज ए बायो केमिकल प्रोसेस what does this biochemical terms means there is a chemical reaction in which oxidation of food is taking place and it always used to take place inside the cells of the living organism so called biochemical process so respiration is a biochemical process in which there is a oxidation of the food it may be carbohydrate fats or protein so the chemical reaction in which oxidation of food takes place inside the cells of the living organism which uh, used to release the energy is named as respiration so respiration is a biochemical process in which organic compounds like carbohydrate fat and proteins used to get oxidized to release the energy in a step wise process now Uh, we used to divide uh, this respiration or we used to classify this respiration mainly into two types that depends that whether we are using whether the organism is using the oxygen to release the energy or to perform the oxidation of food or does not use the or uh, molecular oxygen to release the energy so this respiration is further mainly classified into two types first is anaerobic respiration and second one is aerobic respiration in anaerobic respiration food is oxy oxidized without using the molecular or uh, oxygen so the organism which are performing the anaerobic respiration are commonly named as anaerobes their examples are the lower organisms like bacteria yeast parasites etc now this terms is uh, commonly also named as fermentation in lower organism and on the basis of the by product formed during this respiration we used to classify it it may be alcoholic fermentation or lactic acid fermentation in alcoholic fermentation due to the oxidation of the glucose or oxidation of the food ethyl alcohol is formed so called alcoholic fermentation commonly uh, occurs in the organisms like yeast whereas uh, the <coughs> anaerobic respiration in which lactic acid is formed as a by product during the oxidation of food is named as lactic acid fermentation this lactic acid fermentation also used to take place inside the human body in muscles during vigorous exercise in muscles during vigorous exercise inside the rbc as they do not contain the mitochondria and unable to store the more amount of energy and inside the cornea of our eye and inside the cornea of our eye as it does not contain the blood supply so lactic acid fermentation or anaerobic respiration used to take place inside the human body in three main location inside the muscles during vigorous exercises then inside the rbc of our body red blood cells and inside the 
cornea so we may say we we can say that you inside the human body both form of respiration aerobic and anaerobic respiration are taking place anaerobic respiration mainly at three side inside the rbc in muscles during vigorous exercise and inside the cornea and in other cells of our body aerobic respiration used to take place in aerobic respiration we utilizes the molecular oxygen we utilizes the molecular oxygen to release the energy and the way we used to receive this molecular oxygen from the environment on the basis of it we used to say that this uh, respiration may be further considered as direct respiration or indirect respiration now if we will compare the aerobic and anaerobic respiration we will see more amount of energy is released more amount of energy is released and we utilizes the molecular oxygen inside it the organisms which may receive which can receive directly which can receive the molecular oxygen directly from the uh, environment are termed as direct respiration the organism performing the direct aerobic respiration so the smaller organisms like bacteria protists sponges coelenterates flat worms round worms and in few Uh, and in most of the arthropods they are able to receive the environmental oxygen directly inside their cells so we used to say they used to perform the direct aerobic respiration whereas uh, organisms like human being inside them there are specialized organs or with the help of blood we used to transport this oxygen towards our body cells so we used to say we are not able to uh, receive this oxygen directly into our cells uh, of body so we used to perform indirect aerobic respiration in organisms where they used to receive this molecular oxygen with the help of skin we used to say cutaneous respiration is taking place the organisms which used to like fishes which used to receive this molecular oxygen with the help of gills we used to say brachial respiration is taking place the organisms like human being which used to receive this molecular oxygen with the help of lungs we used to say pulmonary respiration is taking place so it's quite clear for us that respiration is a biochemical process in which we used to perform the oxidation of the food mainly carbohydrate it may be also of fats and protein if we are utilizing the molecular oxygen it will be considered as aerobic if it is taking place without using the molecular oxygen will be considered as anaerobic respiration further considered of two types alcoholic fermentation or lactic acid fermentation on the basis of the by product formed during this process and if we are using this and if the organism is receiving this molecular oxygen directly from the environment into cell will be considered as direct respiration and if the molecular oxygen is received with the help of specialized organs then will be considered as indirect respiration now when we used to study this topic respiratory system there is a uh, bit confusion in between two terms breathing and respiration does these both uh, terms are same or there is any difference between these terms so we used to say that when we use the word breathing it generally refers to the exchange of gases only from the surrounding environment mainly receiving of the fresh air or fresh oxygen and removal of the foul air or removal of the co2 from our body 
So breathing we used to say it is simply an intake of fresh air and removal of foul air and basically it is a physical process in which our muscles are involved mainly intercostal muscles then sometimes during forceful uh, respiration abdominal muscles also used to take part and when these muscles are involved they utilizes the energy so it is a intake of fresh air or removal of foul air it is a physical process no energy is released during breathing rather we used to say it is utilized by the muscles and this process is taking place outside the cells so called extracellular process and no enzymes are involved in breathing so breathing it is simply exchange of gases from our surrounding environment intake of oxygen and removal of uh, carbon dioxide intake of oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide it is a physical process no energy is released rather it is used it used to take place outside the cells so called extracellular process and no enzymes are involved in it basically we used to say in respiration it is a complex process it is a complex process breathing is part of it breathing is part of it after breathing diffusion of gases used to take place after diffusion ex transportation of gases used to take place and once the gases of uh, reaches inside the cells then cellular respiration used to take place so when we use the term respiration we used to say it is a biochemical process in which oxidation of food used to take place which used to form the co2 water and energy so energy is released in this process which is stored in the form of atp and since this uh, uh, process is completed inside the cells of our body so we used to say it is a intracellular process and large number of large number of enzymes are involved in this process so now we uh, 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 can say that we understand both the terms breathing and respiration breathing is a physical process no enzymes are involved it is a extracellular process and it utilizes the energy in which exchange of uh, uh, gases from surrounding environment is taking place whereas respiration is a biochemical process which will release the energy and breathing is a part of this process only after breathing there will be exchange of gases between the alveoli and blood and then blood and uh, tissue there will be transportation of gases and cellular respiration now the surface which used to help in exchange of gases is named as respiratory surface the surface at which exchange of gases used to take place is named as res respiratory surface so in from this chapter the first type of question we need to remember that if there is a indirect uh, respiration indirect aerobic respiration is taking place then uh, what type of this indirect uh, respiration will be termed on the basis of organ involved in the process if it is a skin named as cutaneous respiration gills lungs etc the second main type may come uh, related with the difference between breathing and respiration and the third type is related with the surface respiratory surface so for the efficient gas exchange we need to remember that this respiratory surface should be thin large moist highly vascular and permeable for the respiratory gases and it may be in directly and or indirectly contact with the uh, source of oxygen this source may be air or water which is named as respiratory which is named as 
respiratory medium so now it is clear for us what is respiratory surface and what is respiratory medium the source which used to provide the oxygen it may be air or water is named as respiratory medium and the surface where exchange of gases used to take place is named as respiratory surface for the efficient exchange of gases this surface should be thin large and moist highly vascular easily permeable and uh, uh, remain in contact directly or indirectly with the respiratory medium now the most uh, typical type of question used to form from the uh, from this chapter related with the topic respiratory structure in different group of animals respiratory structure in different group of animal it is most typical type of question from uh, this uh, topic on an average minimum two or maximum three questions used to come from this place so the first type of question it is quite clear for us that what is uh, uh, aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration in aerobic respiration what is indirect respiration and what is direct respiration the difference between breathing and uh, respiration then the respiratory surface and respiratory medium and now fourth type is we need to remember the respiratory structure of different animal groups animal kingdom mein hum groups ko mainly consider karte protozoans sponges cnidarians platyhelminths nematohelminths annelids orthopods mollusk echinoderms hemichordata and chordata out of it we need to remember the important one in lower organisms like in protozoa sponges cnidaria it used to take place either through plasma membrane or body surface in platyhelminths and nematohelminths we used to say that if it is parasite form if it is parasite form then anaerobic respiration is taking place inside them in annelids it is cutaneous respiration respiration through skins in orthopods mainly it used to take place through gills through tracheae in insects and ticks in a scorpion this is important one this is important one in a scorpion and a spider it used to take place through book lungs and in king crab it used to take place through book gills then we also need to remember this is important one for echinoderms it used to take place through tubular feeds in hemichordates urochordates cephalochordates through pharyngeal walls and in vertebrates in organisms like reptile birds and mammals it used to take place through lungs which is named as pulmonary respiration so the first type is clear uh, first type of question from this chapter is clear in neat ug examination we need to understand the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration the types of the aerobic respiration direct and indirect then we need to understand the difference between breathing and respiration after that we need to understand the value or importance of the respiratory surface and medium then the respiratory structures of different group of animals and after that we used to discuss about the problems uh, which animals or organisms used to face related with water breathing and air breathing now when we used to compare these uh, problems of these two type of breathing if the source of a uh, respiratory medium or the source of oxygen is water then we used to say these are the organism performing water breathing and if the source of oxygen is air then we used to say are the group of organisms which are performing air breathing the water contain less amount of oxygen in compared to air so this oxygen diffuses through water very slowly very slowly in compared to the organisms performing air breathing apart from it water is highly dense highly dense almost 800 time denser in compared to air so the organisms like fishes need to perform more efforts 
to maintain the water flow. Apart from it, when the temperature increases, the metabolic activities of the organism also increases. But at the higher temperature, less oxygen is available for the organisms because warm water holds less oxygen. So these are the common problems uh, faced by the organisms performing water breathing. Water contains less amount of oxygen in compared to uh, air. It uh, diffuses very slowly and water is highly dense so organisms used to perform uh, need to perform more efforts. When we compare the uh, problems of the uh, air breathing in compared to water, then we used to say the most important problem is the organism performing air breathing, they need to protect their respiratory surface from drying out. So they need to keep this surface moist as gases passes through the liquid medium. Now, these organisms who are performing air breathing, they used to lose the precious water through evaporation from the respiratory surface. Furthermore, in this chapter, we used to discuss about the structure of the human respiratory system. We used to divide this structure mainly into two parts, conduction part and respiration part. In conduction part, air is moving from the surrounding environment into the respiratory structure. So air used to enter from the external nostril and reaches to internal nostril, passes th with the help of nasopharynx, enter inside the trachea. With the help of trachea, enter into the bronchi, primary, secondary, tertiary, bronchial, respiratory, bronchial and finally reaches up to the alveoli. Now, till the trachea, it is a conduction part where no exchange of gases is taking place. So, this structure is mainly divided into two parts. Conduction part and respiratory part. In respiratory part, exchange of gases, exchange of gases takes place. Exchange of gases takes place. Now, so in this structure, we will discuss about the nasal cavity then we will discuss about the nasopharynx after that onwards about the larynx or voice box then trachea and then finally about the lungs now it is a quite clear from this diagram that air is entering from the external nostril and reaches to the internal nostril from there it passes with the help of nasopharynx then it enters then it enters inside the trachea. From trachea, it is start to reach up to the alveoli. And these alveoli remain in contact with the blood capillary. So this air, oxygen reaches up to the blood capillaries and CO2 comes out from the blood capillaries. Now, the nasal cavity. How we will locate it? Where does this nasal cavity? Basically, if we will represent it on our face then we used to say this part is our nasal cavity located behind the external nostril just above the buccal cavity so it is located back of the nostril just above the buccal cavity we used to divide this cavity into two parts right and left so there are two chambers there are two chambers now in each chamber, if we will touch, there are three reasons. The soft reason, vestibular part, then the middle one, respiratory part, and the innermost, which is con considered as olfactory part. So, outer, soft reason, middle, respiratory part, and then the olfactory part. Now, inside this outer soft part which is named as vestibular part of the nasal cavity, in vestibular part, 
hair and mucus hair and mucus are present which used to trap the dust particles so basically they help to clean the they help to clean the airs respiratory part in this region nasal concave or nasal bones are present nasal concave or nasal bones are present they are present in this manner so they increases the surface area so this nasal concave this nasal concave increases surface area inside the nasal cavity and there is a capillary network there is a capillary network when the air comes in the uh, in contact uh, with the blood uh, with the help of this capillary capillary network then the temperature of the external airs becomes equivalent to internal air so they regulate the temperature of air and sometimes in summer seasons we used to say these capillaries used to get burst and bleeding comes out which is named as apis texas apis texas apis texas now olfactory part need to remember inside it Snederian membrane is present, made up of the pseudo-stratified ciliated epithelium, which help us to detect the order of the air entering inside our nasal cavity. Now, the second part of our uh, conduction part or the structure of respiratory system is nasopharynx. It used to receive the air with the help of internal nostrils and uh, Uh, allow the air to move towards the larynx part now larynx is the uppermost part made up of the cartilages there are nine cartilages three paired and three unpaired the opening of this region this is the uppermost part of trachea named as larynx or voice box the opening of this region is named as glottis and it used to get covered with the help of flap like structure named as epiglottis at the time of ingestion of food now when we start to discuss about the larynx or voice box we used to say it is a cartilaginous structure made up of the cartilages there are nine cartilages three unpaired cartilages thyroid cricoid and epiglottis three paired cartilages arytenoid corniculate and cuneiform these cartilages used to form the larynx it is considered as voice box because inside it vocal cords are present these vocal cords are basically two pairs of mucous membrane the upper pair is named as false vocal cord and lower pair is named as true vocal cords which help in the formation of sound this true vocal cord help in the formation of sound with the help of now what happens at the time of expiration when air passes through this region vibration occurs in it vibration during expiration causes the formation of sound so sound is produced with the help of vocal cords mainly true vocal cords when they used to get vibrate during the expiration sound is produced uh, when we used to perform more forceful expiration then the intensity of sound increases forceful expiration forceful expiration increases the intensity of sound forceful expiration increases the intensity of sound along with true vocal cords 
Our buccal cavity, soft palate, tongue and lips help in the formation of speech. Now, we need to remember that the windpipe is named as trachea. It is trachea or windpipe made up of the inside aid, C-shaped inside aid. C-shaped cartilaginous rings are present. We can touch them also. These cartilaginous rings, these cartilaginous rings prevent the collapsing of the uh, trachea. So, inside it, C-shaped cartilaginous rings made up of the hyaline cartilage is present which prevent the collapsing of the trachea. Inside it, goblet cells are present which used to release the mucus to uh, perform the lubrication and the inner lining of it we need to remember sometimes question used to form inner lining of trachea is made up of the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium at the level of at the level of fifth thoracic vertebra fifth thoracic vertebra it bifurcates into right and left bronchi, which enters inside right and left lung respectively. Lungs are the paired spongy organs located on the posterior side of the buccal cavity in this region. Now, they are covered by the pleural membranes. So, they are enclosed inside the pleural cavity the outer parietal and inner visceral membrane is there which contain the pleural fluid now the size of the right lung is comparatively larger than left lung the size of the right lung is larger than left lung because on the left side uh, cardiac uh, um, is, um, heart is present cardiac nodes is present now the left lung is divided by the oblique fissure into superior and inferior lobe. Right lung used to get divided with the help of oblique and horizontal fissure into three parts, superior, middle and uh, inferior lobes. Inside the lungs, these bronchi is used to keep dividing to form the tree-like structures, primary, secondary and tertiary bronchioles. Finally, they used to open into a chamber-like structure named as alveolar sac inside which pouch-like structures are present which are named as alveoli. They are very tiny. They are very tiny. They used to increase the surface area for the efficient uh, respiratory exchange. In next lecture, we will discuss about the mechanism of respiration. Thank you.